Somebody asked me yesterday, if you can make one fight in 2021, what is it? That would, that's the fight that I picked. Wanting him to get to 30 and 0 is in the back of his mind, and, 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 and he wants to achieve that because he knew his father wanted it. But we'll see. I mean, he and I are going to get together next month and talk. I'm a little confident that I can talk him into it. Dana, thanks so much for talking to us here at BT Sport, here in the Apex. And I just got to start this conversation by congratulating you on such an incredible 2020 when your back was up against the wall. Everybody was saying this can't be done. Fight Island won't happen. You're going to have all these problems and you've gone on to have the most phenomenal year. So huge congratulations and props for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm actually going to tell you a story on the Uber drive here. The guy was, you know, the driver was saying, oh, you're interviewing Dana White, who was like, with what that man's done, he should run for president next time. He was like, he should run for president. Do you think he would? I was like, well, I can ask him. So. Hell no. Uh, but thank you. I, I appreciate it. It was uh, definitely the toughest year of my career, but very unique and cool in a lot of different ways, too. Um, I like solving problems. I like doing things that people say can't be done. So... Um, it was a challenging, good year for me. Well, you certainly did that. And I was going to ask, what motivates you? Is it the naysayers, you know, or is it just internally what you want to achieve? What's the biggest motivator for you to succeed the way you do? Oh, I love the naysayers. <laughs> I love the people that say you can't and the people that, that, that are begging for you to fail. I love that stuff. That's, that's what I feed off of. So, uh, yeah, if you tell me I, it can't be done... I'm going to show you you're wrong. <laughs> and you have done. And I know you're very proud of your team, but what is the, the proudest part of this year for you? I mean, obviously getting everything up and running, but what personally do you feel most proud of achieving? Well, I think, I, I think what's happened this year is uh, obviously me, me and my staff, you know, it, it brings you closer together when, when uh, you know, nobody got laid off, no salaries were cut, and then when you look at the fighters, every fighter contract was honored. So, um, did you learn anything about yourself? No, I, I wouldn't say that I learned anything about myself. Um, this isn't the first tough thing that I've ever done, but um, one thing that, that, that rang loud and clear, like it always did, is don't ever listen to the media. Right. Don't ever listen to the media. Don't ever listen to anybody else try to tell you um, how you should, what you should do in your personal or professional life, ever. Yeah. They don't know anything. Just because they write for some paper or they're on TV doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about or, or they have any of the answers. And the thing about, uh, about me is, is quitting is never the answer. It's mm -hmm. never the solution. Quitting is never the solution. I, I just, I was blown away by how many people were willing to just quit. Right. Well, one fascinating of the big, to me. It is fascinating. And, you know, you've, you've, you've proven those people to be wrong. One of the biggest challenges, I'm sure, has been the COVID testing. And I heard some figures recently, maybe you can repeat them for us here, on just how many tests the UFC has conducted, how many people have been tested, and the cost of the testing to be able to carry on. Over 36,000 tests this year. Wow. And to, to what cost? Over $17 million wow. in COVID expenses, not just testing, yeah. but COVID-related expenses is, is over $17 million. And although you know, there have been positive tests and fights that have had to be cancelled, it's a relatively small number of people when you look at the roster and the number of the fights that have taken place. Yeah, I mean, everybody, there was all this celebrating the NBA last week. Uh, they had an 8.8% uh, positive rate, and everybody thought that was yeah. incredible. Ours is 0.08%. 0 0.08. 0 .08. We flew 1,500 people in Gosh. to Fight Island, you know, between fighters, staff, whatever, um, and from 40 different countries around the yeah. world. And when you look at, you know, our, our, our positive rate, it's pretty phenomenal. It's very low. And it's not just been that you've put on fights. You've put on incredible fights. I think in some ways... Everyone's rose to the occasion and the challenge, and it's been a year of, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You know, the opportunity for some fighters that were lesser known to really shine, and we can talk about several of them, Shamayev, who we'll talk about in a moment, etc. cetera. But what, what fight or fighter, you can name a couple if you want, have, have been the standouts for you this year? Yeah, no, no, you're right. And, and I agree with you. And, and, you know, I feel like my staff stepped up, the fighters definitely stepped up, and you have guys who have fought multiple times. Yeah. 
this year, which is phenomenal. And, and when you really think about when I was telling you all the different, you know, quitting is never an, an option to me. There's always a solution. There's a way to figure these things out. But it's amazing how one decision mm -hmm. can affect so many people. Yeah. If I decide, forget it, we're not going to go. We're just going to sit this thing out like all these other businesses did and things like that. You're talking... I'd, I'd have had to lay off probably 50% or more of my mm. staff. You'd have cut all the executive salaries in half mm. or more. Um, you're talking almost $200 million that wouldn't have been paid to fighters. And the list mm. goes on and on. And when you start really thinking about that and, and, and the impact it would have had on so many people, it's... You must be uh, very proud of that. It's jarring. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's by far and away the thing that I'm the most proud of. And like you say, your staff, your fighters have stepped up. We went from Tony Ferguson, Gaethje kicking off the post-COVID sort of shutdown, if you like. Well, not post-COVID, but the, you know, the hiatus from the UFC. Right. Coming back, we come full circle, Tony Ferguson fighting again. Um, but if you look forward to 2021 now, and, let, you know, there's some fights that have already been set. We've got Fight Island to look forward to again. Are the three fights on January 16th, 20th, 23rd all going to be on Fight Island? Is that... Confirmed? That's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah it's, yeah, it's not done yet, but that's the deal we're working on. And of those fights, is there going to be anything different that we see? Are we going to see fans? Are you looking at the Etihad Stadium for any of those? Yes, we're definitely looking at Etihad to, to, to do the fights. We would love to do fans. <clears throat> We've been working on that with Abu Dhabi since the last time we were there. And these guys are, are light years ahead of the rest mm -hmm. of the world. Abu Dhabi's tested everybody that's in the country. Um... They helped us build the best bubble anywhere <clears throat> on Earth. And the problem is right now is that this thing's starting to kick up again. You know, more people are testing positive. And, you know, I don't know if Abu Dhabi wants to fly people in from all over the world mm -hmm. that could possibly have, you know, so bring COVID back into the country. So these are things we're working on, pre-testing, testing, testing yeah. there once they're on the ground and, and, and things like that. So... Um, I don't know yet. Yeah. It's okay. all, this is all stuff that's still in the works. Well, let's talk about the fights that we do have lined up to look forward to in 2021. And, of course, on the 23rd, UFC 257, Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, they run it back this time at 155 pounds. How have both of them evolved as fighters? Like, how different do you think this fight will be this time around? Of course, Conor got the win the last time. It's a completely different fight. Obviously, Conor McGregor is a much better fighter than he was when, when he first faced him. And Poirier is, is a much better fighter, too. Um, I don't know how that plays out now in the fight, but uh, it's definitely interesting. You know, you can't look at the first fight and go, oh, this is exactly the way that's going to go again, because it won't. And it's at a different weight class. Yeah, and they had a lot of trash talk last time, whereas they seem to just both be, like, crushing it in the gym, looking in insane shape, seeing Connor's videos and, and pictures he's putting up, and just, just focusing on the fight and nothing yeah. else. Connor looks damn good, um, and, and Poirier's always in shape, so um, I, I expect this to be a good fight. Yeah, me too. When you think of Connor in, in the beginning of this year, that 40-second victory over Cowboy Cerrone, and then we thought we were going to see Connor fight regularly. This was Connor coming back, and then obviously no one could anticipate COVID, but he had a lot of frustrations himself. There was a feeling he did want to fight, but maybe there wasn't the right fight, or was it the fact you can't fight Connor without fans? Was that sort of part of the thinking? Well, no, no, that was never. Uh... You know, yeah, it definitely sucks <laughs> it hurts, yeah. having Connor not fight uh, with fans, but um, th that wasn't the reason that the fights didn't happen. Um, it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. And he said he was going to retire, but. And I think, I think Connor originally, when it first happened, Connor was like, I don't know about fighting without fans. Mm -hmm. And then he saw how the fights were going. You know, there's always these little. Things that happen in the sport, and everybody sort of likes to sit back and watch. Let's see how this plays out. You know, when we did the ESPN deal, and we're going on ESPN Plus, and we're going on this. You know, I, I think when I said I was going to go through COVID, a lot of people were skeptical and wanted to see how this thing was going to play out. Um, and Connor's probably one of them. Yeah.
and he's seen the fights that have been put on and he wants... So do you think that was the motivating factor with him saying, right, I'm ready to come back or with your conversations with Connor, you know, what do you think was the turning point from retirement to... Well, I, th I, think, I think it's what you said originally. I think frustration. I think yeah. he was frustrated with a lot of, uh, you know, things that were beyond our control, you know, and he just gets to the point where, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm not going to deal with this aggravation right now. I'm not going to let this drive me crazy when the world is shutting down and all mm -hmm. these other things are going on and, you know, again... That's that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I mean, Ask Connor's Connor, a... and he, he'd probably have a different answer. Yeah. I don't know, but that's 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 what I'm thinking. And he, you know, he's a born fighter. Despite the money he has in the bank, he doesn't need to fight, as you've said before. But he's choosing to, and, and we're going to get a great fight. Um, with the lightweight division, then, wh where is this title picture going? I mean, Habib retired. It's been a very difficult year for him. 29 and 0. He, you know, we know he's a man, family, faith is so important. He gave his word to his mother, but he'd always said 30 and 0. His dad had said 30 and 0. Do you think, is that why he's still labeled the champion right now? He hasn't relinquished the belt? Is, is there a chance he'll, he'll fight on for that one more fight? You know, I think his dad wanting him to get to 30 and 0 is in the back of his mind, and, 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 and he wants to achieve that because he knew his father wanted it. Mm. Um, but we'll see. I mean, he and I are going to get together next month and talk. Yeah. And we'll, 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 he might not. Maybe he won't fight. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, mm -hmm. but I'm a little confident that I can talk him into it. Okay. And if that's the case, is there maybe opportunity to make Connor and Dustin for an interim title fight? Is it more just a title challenger elimination type of fight? You know, is there an interim title that could be nah, put no, on? No interim title. No. I'll know next month. I mean... Yeah. I'll know when Connor and, 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 and Poirier are fighting whether he, he's going to uh, fight again. So it are, all times out perfectly. Are you excited for Chandler's first fight? I like Michael Chandler very yeah. much. Great guy. Talked to him for 30 seconds on the phone and knew I wanted him to be here. So he's my kind of guy. Yeah, okay. I like it. We're anticipating that one. And looking back to January on the 20th now, Leon Edwards will get that fight against Hamzad Shamayev. I mean, Leon Edwards has got to be one of the unluckiest sort of victims of, of this year's fighting roster, if you like. I mean, 100%. first travel restrictions and then getting COVID. And actually, I hear being quite sick with it as well, losing a lot of weight. So you've got to feel for, for Leon and what he's been through. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's been a rough run for him, man. And uh, we'll get him squared away. Mm -hmm. We'll get him figured out. We'll get him back in there. And, and what, was, what was the thinking with matching him up with Hamza? I mean, he's much higher ranked. You know, he's almost like poised for that title shot. This is a fight that could derail that that direction he's he's been heading well, towards. Well, listen, if you're if you're ranked in the top five and and you're worried about being derailed by a guy that's ranked mm. you know in the top fifteen. Yeah, I don't think he's worried. In fact, I know he's yeah. not worried. But I'm just saying it's an it's an interesting matchup in that respect. Yeah, I well, realistically, if you look at it, Hamza burst onto the scene. I mean, the guy has 1.1 million followers yeah. overnight. Um, he's one of the. He, he, there's a lot of tough guys that Edwards could fight that don't have the same excitement value of fighting a guy like Hamzat. And Hamzat's either real or he's not. We're going to find out. You know how you find out? You face a guy like Leon Edwards. <laughs> Biggest test for sure. Would a win over Hamzat, though, still keep Leon in that title picture? For example, we've got Burns and, and Usman fighting. Does I think he get it, the next shot? I think it raises him. I think, okay. I think Edwards comes out with a win over, over uh, Hamzat it, it takes him to a whole nother level. Okay. And it comes that wins. <laughs> and when you talk about the bad things that have happened to him this year and, you know, all the things he's overcome, this is, this is one of the most high-profile fights he could get. Yeah, it's this is a perfect fight for him. It's certainly an exciting one. We look forward to that. And then also we've got Max Holloway coming back facing Calvin Cater. That's on the 16th. Is that right? Yeah. Um, Max, two losses to Volkanovski. First time he'll be in a fight that isn't a title fight. Um, Calvin coming off a two-fight win streak looking good. I mean, what are your thoughts on this fight and Max getting back towards another title shot maybe? Yeah, that's another fun fight. I mean, at the, we're very lucky that we're able to match up some of these guys um, and these fights have stayed together, uh, the big ones, the ones that we care about. And uh, that's a fun one. Yeah. Very, very fun fight. Well, they're the fights we know about. Just to, to tease a few others, I'd be remiss not to ask about John Jones. He relinquished his light heavyweight title, wants to fight at heavyweight. Any 
conversations with John? Mm. It doesn't seem like he's in a rush to get back, but, you know, what's that likely to be? I'm trying to think of how long John Jones has been in the UFC now. It's, you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. John Jones and I had the best conversation we've ever had about a week ago. All right. And, um, yeah, he's ready. He's ready to come back. His head's in the right place. And uh, he and I are in a really good place. That's really good to hear. And would it be for the title against Miocha? I know Ngannou would probably have something to say yeah, about that. Yeah, or... No, no, no. He, he doesn't get to jump over Francis and, okay. and, and fight for a title. Um, I don't know what we're going to do yet or how it's going to play out, but we're working on it. He said recently how the guys at 205 just weren't scaring him and exciting him, and he, he felt it showed in his performances. So do you think we're going to see a renewed, revived, energized John Jones in the heavyweight division? I do. I, I think that he's excited for this challenge, and, um, you know, he, he's excited to, to cement his legacy as the greatest to ever do it. Absolutely. And so with that, Nganu gets that shot at Miocic and, and any, any idea as to when that could take place? How soon into 2021? Um, I don't know. No. I, I'm, I'm not looking too far into okay. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking of moving up, um, our middleweight champion, Izzy, uh, uh, Israel Adesanya is also looking to fight up and at light heavyweight. He still wants the John Jones fight, but it, Jan Blakovic, does he get to go straight in and get a title shot against Jan? Yeah, I, I think that they, they both like that idea. I love it. Be fun. Yeah, head of Glover to Teixeira? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And and Izzy and John down the line. As a fan, is that a fight? That that's that's the fight I would love to see. That's the fight that I would love to see. They somebody asked me yesterday, if you can make one fight in 2021, what is it? That would that's the fight that I picked. I think there's a lot of fans that would agree with you there. They want to see that one. Got to ask as well about our fellow Brit, um, my fellow Brit, Darren Till. Um, yep. Obviously didn't get to fight Hermanson, so now both coming off of a loss. Is that still a fight that makes sense? Yeah, I mean, th th that fight does still make sense. I'm not sure that's what we'll do, but yeah. Okay, it could make sense. Any, any other names or, or ideas as to who Darren could fight? Not yet. No, wait and see. Okay, and then in the welterweight division, Kamaru and Gilbert Burns looking to get that one made or remade, should I say, yes. in the new year. Th that'll happen this year. Okay. And Volkanovski, Brian Ortega, February, I heard? Probably. Probably February. Yeah. Okay, pushing some dates here. And what do you make that's of... That's a fun fight, too. I love that's that That's a fight. very fun fight. What do you make of the women's divisions this year? I mean, Amanda Nunes, a, a new mother. She seems just so content and happy and still reigning supreme at featherweight and bantamweight. Um, we we're hoping to see her again before the end of the year. But how soon do you see Amanda getting back in there? And soon. Megan yeah. Anderson still? Yeah, we'll yep. get her in there soon. Um, Whaley. Yep. Get oh, her fighting I've soon. missed watching her fight. Me Can't too. Wait to see her. Me too. I mean, her training videos yeah. are insane. She gets better and better every day. Um, and that would be against Rose, Nami Yunus? What I'm hearing is Rose does not want a title shot. Oh. Rose does not want to fight for a title. She didn't like the pressure of being the champion. I don't think she did. Yeah, she doesn't want to fight for the title. So okay. we'll see how that all plays out. So we're looking at, if you look at the rankings and how it plays out, it would play out Whaley versus Carlos Esparza. Right, okay. And at um, F uh, Shevchenko at flyweight uh, and Jessica, uh, who is, who, oh, Andrade, yeah, that's, that's one. That oh, my God, yeah, I'm really, really <laughs> excited for that fight. Valentina versus Andrade, that's, that's a... A really good fight. Because it's been a while where I've thought, well, who can face Valentina? That's exactly. going to be a real challenge. But Andrade. it's beautiful because Valentina is getting at that Tyson esque level where it's just like, come on, nobody's going to beat Valentina Shevchenko. And now Jessica Andrade moves up, stops Chukagian with a with a uh, with a body shot, which you don't see you don't see women knock other women out, let alone knock them out with body shots, and. Uh, this is a great stylistic matchup and a fun fight. Yeah, so many fights to look forward to. Um, last question from me. You, you mentioned after letting go of uh, Yoro Romero, there's going to be a lot of cuts. Around 60 fighters will be um, let go of the, from the roster. I mean, just out of interest, how many fighters do you currently have on the roster? 
what do we have right now? Roughly. It's over 600. It's like I, 650. How does that compare to, to last year? Is Very heavy. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Contender Series has pushed so many new contracts. No, no, no. Like, it has yeah. not, we've been doing the Contender yeah. Series for four years. But it's growing it more and more, huh? It doesn't have anything to do with the Contender Series. It's, it's that during COVID, we, we didn't cut anybody. We just... Yeah. You know. So what? So my question was going to be, what is the criteria for fighters that will, you know, be let go? Well, it's the same as it always is. This is this is nothing new. This always happens. And the reason that it's this many guys right now is because we haven't been doing it. We haven't been cutting anybody off the roster after fights. So every weekend after a show happens, some people get released. Yeah. Um, and we haven't been doing that for like 12 months. So. Um, you know, this this will be a big block of yeah. people, which is unusual. Usually it's two or three a week. Yeah, okay. And oh, and we've got Tough to look forward to as well next year. Is there any news on that? On what? The Ultimate Fighter, Tough, coming back? Yes, yeah. yes, it's coming back. Um, it'll be in mid-2021. We'll start filming. Okay. okay, nice. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, Dane. It's been a pleasure as always. And are you going to have some time off over Christmas? Yes, yes. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sunday, this Sunday I'm, I'm taking off. I'm going to the Caribbean. Oh, Wonderful. Yeah, I wow. got a boat, and then I'm just going to float around for, for uh, eight days and uh, relax. Amazing. If anyone deserves it, you do. Congratulations on an amazing year. Looking forward to everything to come next year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.